I'm going to begin, uh, Toby, just about, firstly just by asking about working with, with Jordan. I mean, you've worked with several such sort of incredible filmmakers at, mm. at various stages in their career. Uh, but I just wondered about having a, someone who's made such a great kind of indie film and has taken that transition to blockbuster. Right. And whether that makes a difference, if, if they kind of maintain their kind of indie sensibilities and something a bit more understated about their approach at all, or if they're just the same as any other blockbuster filmmaker? Well, I think, I think the word of advice is, you know, if you, if you make that quick transition, you're going to be under the thumb of, of the studio and the producers. So your vision has to be very clear. You know, you have to learn to say no very effectively um, if you want your vision to come through, because it's a, it's a decision by committee. Uh, most of the time with, with a big blockbuster studio film. I think he stayed very strong to the vision he wanted to create. Um, but I think, you know, if, if you're capable, you're capable. Uh, where you began is, is, is often n neither a hindrance nor a benefit. So um, I think he got very lucky with the producers he got. Um, Legendary and, and Thomas Toll and John Joshney, etc., Mary Parent. But I think um, it, it can be very, very difficult. Um, and uh, and he did really well. So I mean, you, you do yourself. You seem to make sort of uh, sort of quite a few blockbusters. But mm. I was wondering if we will sort of see you return to that more kind of indie setting because I still think to this day, Dead Man's Shoes is probably the best performance from you, which I just yeah. one of my favorite films no, of the time. Thank you, man. No, I appreciate can, it. Can we expect you to kind of move between the two? Because the last like four or five years has been predominantly kind of sort of bigger budget productions. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's the difference. Say like Gold, which is an indie film, mm. or uh, A Monster Calls, which is an indie film. Um, oh yeah, I the, I the, the pair of them um, are actually not what we consider indie films. You know, indie films for us, Dead Man's Shoes was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is a massive amount of money. It's three quarters of a million, but once you're doing lights and cameras and all that work, as you well know, it, it's quickly dwindles. So, um, I love to. I just worked with Whitney Cummings again, seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars, and then I did an, another sort of indie, technically, with with Rob Cohen. Um, category five, so they'll be coming out later this year, hopefully, if possibly the beginning of next year. Um, but yes, it's 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 difficult. It's difficult to find work. You know, sometimes you go onto an indie and you think, oh, it's going to be indie. We get all these things, but the same things happen. You know, sometimes a lot of people are trying to try try the pie before it's baked, and uh, and it doesn't quite come out the way they hoped. So you just got to you got to pick and choose with things that you feel you can portray um, well. And that's all I try and do. Well, you're quite good at portraying apes. We've seen that before. I am. And, then, <laughs> and in this instance, I was wondering about, I mean, obviously you do some sort of motion capture stuff where you kind of worked on that side of things. Um, was, that, was that the kind of case right from the offset? Was that something that was kind of discussed later on that, that was decided that you would get involved with that side of things as well? There was a discussion right at the beginning. Um, and then uh, Terry went and did some reference work for ILM for the, for the movements. And then I think they decided they didn't really want to do it as a giant ape. They wanted to do it as the ape genus, but much more of a monster like the 1933 version. So in the end, what I came back and did um, in regards to the reference of that was give them, you know, the, the, the nuance of, of emotion, you know, even in the raw, you know, making sure that it, it had some pain attached to it, that it wasn't just, you know, the, the roar of a wild beast. So I think it's, that's the character of Kong. Kong needs to have the humanity because he's the one of the only monsters where you know he's not just a predator. You you misjudge him. He's the one who's smashing everything, but then you realise he's dealing with a huge amount. So he's that one with humanity. I mean, you you seem to really kind of embrace this new means of, of storytelling. Mm. Uh, I was just wondering. I mean, it must because it must be so different to what you when you sort of first learnt your craft and were kind of doing drama. This is such a kind of wildly different side of the kind of industry to, to that. It must keep things things so kind of interesting for you when you get to try this new kind of fangled means of, of storytelling. Yeah, it does keep it interesting, but, but actually it keeps it interesting because um, it's actually a throwback to where I began. It's very much like theatre work. You know, uh, mocap in general is, is like doing theatre work under a, under a microscope. It's very detailed. So, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm hugely privileged to get to have an opportunity to do it. But I think, you know, there's a lot of movies that have come out and are coming out with, with some of this uh, capture reference work. and. You know, it's not of the standard that it should be, and um, you know, you'll see it in, in, you know, there's musicals coming out that really don't have what's required to do that subtlety, and uh, you know, it will show people up. So we're in a very early stage of what mocap is and what it will become, um, but for this one, yeah, literally just the reference given uh, was enough for them to to give Kong what he needed. 
Brilliant. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Nice. Hey You Guys.